Hey, Ryan, how you doing? Oh, hey, John. Good, how are you? <laughs> Good. I was wondering if you could give me sort of um, an iceberg 101, kind of how, how this whole thing came about, if you have a few minutes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so iceberg, we, we started at Netflix because we were running up against uh, a number of different, like, hard to solve problems. And what we realized were was that we were applying a lot of band-aids um, mm -hmm. around one big central issue um, rather than just solving the problem more directly. Um, so what we were running into were like, I'd say three general areas of, of issues. Um, so the first one was just correctness. Um, mm -hmm. We were very sensitive at the time to tables and queries lying to us. Um, you know, no one really likes it when you can't trust the the answer from your your analytic query. Yeah. Um, and we found that people didn't really know when they could trust the the results of their queries. Mm -hmm. And what they generally wanted was sort of like, I want to be able to trust my queries all the time, even if someone's touching the table <laughs> or, you know, yeah. that, that sort of thing. Um, and so we, we really wanted um, to, to solve that. Uh, I think that was at first our, our primary goal. Okay. Um, but we quickly realized that um, the same sort of issues were causing performance problems elsewhere. So let me give you a quick example of that. Um, correctness issues are, are occurring in Hive tables because there is no transactional system in Hive. Um, you can uh, basically use a database to alter the list of partitions, but the data files that are actually in those Hive partitions mm -hmm. are uh, determined by what's in the file system. And the file system has no transactional guarantees. You can't say, make these five files across three directories show up at exactly the same time. Right. And even if you could, you got to list those directories separately. Uh, in order to get the contents and what is in the hive table. Um, so the the correctness issue is not always having a consistent state of the table or atomic transactions or whatnot. Um, so if someone else makes a change, you just get incorrect data. Um, the performance aspect is that you're listing hundreds or thousands of directories and um, for, for Netflix, where we were building on S3 is one of the, I think, early pioneers of uh, cloud-based or cloud-native data warehousing. Um, you know, that was just a, a huge performance issue. Um, so we were building band-aids like parallelizing file listing operations and, and all sorts of things, turning off guarantees within the Hadoop file system just to... <laughs> <laughs> basically uh, squeeze out the performance 70 milliseconds at a time. Mm. And then the the third area that sort of led to the introduction of Iceberg was uh, we realized that a, a related issue was just a ton of data engineering productivity. So, you know, as you can imagine, not trusting uh, the, not trusting your queries to give you correct answers yeah. can really wreak havoc on data engineer productivity. Yeah. Um, but also we discovered things, um, I would say uh, at this point, I look back on it as like rediscovering the SQL um, table abstraction <laughs> <laughs> because we realized that um, our, our engineers were just drained from uh, renaming a column and having like correctness implications. like. Hey, I renamed a column and now Presto doesn't read my data correctly. Uh, oh, now you have to go take a day and and clean that up. Or uh, hey, I I need to like change the partitioning on this table, and we'd have to say, oh well, go rewrite the entire thing and then rewrite every query that is downstream of that, right? Like really ugly things that are are not fun um, to be surprised by. So. Yeah. Um, the project quickly took on things like uh, hidden partitioning and schema evolution to sort of fix those productivity issues as well. Okay. Okay. Well, that's a big problem to solve. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it took us a little while to do that anyway. <laughs> God, I bet. 
Well, thank you. I appreciate that introduction to the background on it. I'm going to hit you up with more questions at another time, though. Sounds <laughs> if you great. Don't mind. Okay. 